Hello everybody, welcome back to Thieges Notebook Review. I'm your host, Joel Michael, and what I have for you today is from... <music> Lenovo! This is the Lenovo IdeaPad S340. It comes with Intel's latest low-power Core i7, the 1065G7, with 4 cores, 8 threads, and 8 megabytes of L3 cache that runs up to 3.9 gigahertz. This CPU comes packed with the latest and greatest Intel integrated GPU, Iris Plus, that promises a 20% increase in performance over last year's iGPU. To supplement all this non-dedicated power is 12 gigs of DDR4 RAM and 256 gigs of NVMe SSD storage. The 15.6-inch 1080p LCD screen shows you what's what, while the 3-cell 52-watt-hour battery keeps the blood pumping for a little bit above an hour while gaming, over 3 hours of streaming video, and almost 5 hours of internet work use. The S340 is available from many outlets, but is widely available on eBay and Amazon, starting at just over $500 for the model with 8 gigs of RAM and a 256 gig SSD. If I wasn't going to be super productive or store a bunch of crap, that's where I'd start looking. More expensive models up the memory, storage space, and give you Windows 10 Pro. Let's see what all those holes in the side do. On the right we have the power indication LED, the patented Lenovo hole of forget me plenty, an SD card reader, thank all that is good and holy, and two USB 3.0s. One of those USB ports can charge your device. On the left is where the power dongle goes, HDMI, USB Type-C, and headset in. Only two standard USB ports is unfortunate but predictable, and you should be thanking your lucky stars that it comes with a full-sized HDMI port, but there's no wired LAN port to be found. The top of the laptop is matte plastic that will reject fingerprints, and the palm rest is a comfy rubberish plastic that provides more friction. The main chassis flexes easily under strain, and although the display is quite rigid, it's easy to flick the monitor out of position. The laptop itself weighs in at under 4 pounds, so it'll be light enough to carry around campus without putting a strain on your shoulder. The previous Lenovo laptops I've reviewed have all come with a power adapter featuring a rectangular-ish male connector, but this laptop has a very small, rounded one. My biggest gripe about the whole package is the length of the power cord. It's barely taller than me at 6.5 feet, and seating options will be constricted when it's time to drink that wall juice. You'll need a T5 Torx screwdriver to take the bottom cover off this time. With that removed, we can see that the Wi-Fi card is relatively slim, and there's a 2.5-inch drive bay with a caddy for available cheap mass storage. Remember, some manufacturers, I won't name names, Acer, will not include a caddy and will charge you for one. Moving on, we see that there's just one solitary heatsink apparatus for the lonely Core i7 without a dedicated GPU, and a trooper of a fan to single-handedly cool the notebook. Now observe the single accessible RAM slot that's hidden under a static metal shield. Yes, there are two RAM sticks, the other one is soldered on. That means there's no dual channel memory. That means you're not getting as much performance as you possibly can out of the 10th gen Core i7. Just something to keep in mind. The keyboard on the Lenovo S340 does good work. I can type on it very comfortably, and it's easy to get used to. The travel is short, the noise is low, but still clicky, and I don't sacrifice much speed or accuracy compared to a desktop keyboard, save for when I have to reach for the shortened backspace key. The numpad keys might be narrowed, but the zero key is double wide. Unfortunately, there's always that one thing that Lenovo gets rather wrong. In this case, the problem isn't that there's no backlight, because that's an extra creature comfort for pricier notebooks. No, what's wrong here is that the S340 gives us dedicated playback buttons instead of home, end, and page scrolling keys. Those are relegated to being secondary functions of the arrow keys, and it's a pain in the ass. The touchpad works well enough. In this case, it doesn't get in my way while typing at all. The gestures feel natural, and the motion is predictable. It might just be the fact that I'm getting used to these buttonless bastardizations of competent touchpads with physical keys, but honestly, this one isn't half bad. It doesn't use the Windows Precision drivers, but I don't think it needs them. As long as your right-clicking dexterity is up to par, you'll be fine. 
The LCD panel on this Lenovo is not complete garbage, and that means a lot coming from me, who's stepping down from the glorious 144Hz IPS panel on the Electronics Mech 15. Even though the display can fall back a full 180 degrees, that only serves to help you find a comfortable viewing angle, for which you'll be doing quite a bit of searching, seeing as how the colors quickly distort at an angle. When you look at it proper though, the colors do pop, and gradients are well hidden. Compared to the cheap IPS panels I've encountered on the Acer Nitro 5 and Dell G3, the colors have a good deal more vibrance on this display, and it truly is a shame then that the viewing angles are quite terrible. In a more pleasant light, the brightness levels do get two ticks over comfortably bright, and can go two ticks past comfortably dim for a pitch black room. I wouldn't rely on it for Photoshop, but watching video is a better than average experience. Lenovo typically does good speakers, and these stereo blasters eat up 2 watts each. The overall volume is good, you can fill a room, and the bass and treble balance is respectable. That being said, the software equalizer is very intrusive, and draws bass tones up into the treble range. When other instruments have to compete with the bass line, nobody wins, and the total volume is lowered when everything is played at once. So the bass line and rage against the machines calm like a bomb is present and accounted for, and the deep bass in a perfect circle's the package is very weak, but audible. It just doesn't explode like it should when the heavy guitar comes in. Thankfully, even though all audio sounds a little muffled, consuming media is still enjoyable, and you won't be desperate to use headphones. Just be prepared to hear those droning background noises that would otherwise be well hidden under a balanced equalizer. This is a test of the webcam on the Lenovo S340. This is household lighting, so it's not quite as well lit as an office environment, but the laptop webcam does seem to be compensating quite nicely. It's not too terribly blocky with the colors, and the motion is not that great. Again, it's only a 720p webcam, so don't expect too much, but the microphone is quite clear, even though it's just a mono signal. And that's the test of the webcam here of the Lenovo S340. System performance is very good thanks to this being a Core i7 and still 25 watts of headroom. Sure, like I mentioned before, we're not getting the benefits of dual channel glory, but when running regular office programs, it's hard to take notice. The saving grace of this setup is the 256 gig SSD that writes past 2 gigs a second and reads past 3 gigs a second. That's screaming fast. And it shows. Temps for the CPU can get to about 75 degrees, which is not too shabby for a notebook proc, and the fan stays nice and quiet no matter what you're doing, even while playing games. With multiple programs open, this package of components doesn't even hint at slowing down. YouTube and Twitch streams have no problem running while music production and office do their thing in the background. I dare say you'll be just peachy with the 8 gig model, but it never hurts to have 12 at your disposal. This guy wouldn't be half bad at video editing on the go, as long as it's trimming down some vacation footage and not anything as complicated as, well, this video. On to gaming. This laptop kinda sorta isn't that great at it. I understand that Iris Plus is supposed to be a huge improvement over the last generation of Intel integrated graphics, but there's no substitution for dedicated VRAM. Even with 12 gigs, anything after a loading screen or transition of any kind is going to send your frame rates to da choppa for at least a good 5 seconds. Some games won't even launch, like Snake Pass or Witcher 3. I don't know how Rocket League even loads, but the gameplay suffers tremendously at the start of every menu or match. Thankfully, more flexible titles like Blizzard's games can be configured to be ugly as f and run decently well at 720p. At least it's easy to know your limits, like not being able to play intensive AAA games within the past five years. At least the temperature stays nice and cool for your lap at all times, the fan doesn't get aggressively loud, and you game at full power while away from the plug. For the bottom line, the Lenovo S340 is a great office machine with plenty of power, speed, and grace to get you through the workday. 
The battery life is a bit on the medium side compared to the competition, but its competition is much more expensive. If Lenovo wanted to make it perfect, they'd have given it backlit keyboard, completely modular memory, a longer power cord, dedicated home end and page scrolling buttons, and while the Reddit slapped a ThinkPad label on it. Investing in a better machine with these perks would definitely be worth it, but in this price range, you'll be hard pressed to find something better. In conclusion, students get a thumbs way, way up. It's light, has good battery life, an excellent keyboard, and plenty of speed for very little money. And the best part of all is, if all you can spring for is the 256GB SSD drive, you won't have room for a lot of games. That means a guaranteed excellent GPA, right? Right? Most casual gamers can skip out on this one. I say most because some casual gamers just play 2D games and skip out on Fortnite or PUBG. However, if those games are what you dig, just wait until Best Buy has another cheap gaming laptop on sale at this price point, which happens about once a month. Competitive gamers can steer way clear. If you're on a highway that leads to this laptop, get out of the car and light the car on fire. Business users, I'd hate to say it, but you can avoid this laptop if you want. Why? It has play buttons instead of dedicated home and and page scrolling keys. Students can learn to live with these setbacks. In fact, it's their job to learn things. Your job is to be productive. And if you can't be productive, you get frustrated. Upgrade to the ThinkPad and make sure it has Windows 10 Pro for the extra security features. Home users should definitely look into this. It has power, speed, subtlety, and battery life all nailed into a perfect price performance package that delivers all it should and more at just over $500. Need a bigger, decent screen? Check. Good battery life? Check. Easy to carry around the house? Check. Good for media consumption? Check. Has peripherals that let you work and don't get in your way? Checkity check check, except for those pesky play buttons. In any case, well worth it. Buy it. This has been a review of the Lenovo IdeaPad S340 here on Thieges Notebook Review. I review laptops whenever I see a good deal, so be sure to subscribe to see what's what in the laptop buying market. If you like the review, give it a thumbs up and share it on your preferred social platform so that everyone you care about, and sure, those people you don't, can also make a well-informed laptop buying decision. Thanks for watching, and you guys, have a good night.